Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from OurYouTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at calculating the pH of buffer solutions. Now buffer solutions are quite a, uh, a complex bunch of uh, reactions but if you're not sure on what a buffer solution is then I strongly recommend that you either read up on them or you can have a look at the video uh, which I made which explains how buffer solutions work. So if you just click on the link just below uh, you can find out what they are. But this video assumes that you know um, how buffers work. Now, buffer solutions obviously um, resist the change in pH uh, when small amounts of acids or alkalis are added. Um, but we can actually work out the pH of the specific type of buffer that we're making. So, um, and in this case, we're going to work out the pH of, a, of an acidic buffer. Um, so we've got the equations here. Um, now these two equations show us um, how our buffer works. Now our buffer is made up of a weak acid and its salt. And you can see here I've written down the two equations showing the two parts of the buffer. Um, and you can see that obviously we have high concentration of your acid and it weakly dissociates. It doesn't dissociate that much at all hardly. So we say that the concentration is very high for this and almost negligible for these two. Whereas um, for our salt we assume that it actually dissociates fully for the purposes of this calculation. Um, and so that's why we've written our concentration of our salt in the buffer solution to be extremely low. Um, and these two ions, where it dissociates into, are seen to be quite high. So that's two of the assumptions that we've made there. And it is important that we can make these assumptions to be able to do the calculations properly. Now, because we're calculating a buffer, and buffers contain weak acids, then we need, obviously, our um, Ka expression. The Ka expression is our acid dissociation constant. Um, if you're not sure on how to work out the Ka, there is a video on that as well. So if you just click on the link just below, uh, and you'll be able to find out about Ka. And obviously, um, the only difference here is that we have to keep our A minus part, whereas when we're working out the pH of just a weak acid on its own without the salt, we don't need the A minus part, but for buffer solutions we do. So it's important that you keep that bit in there for this purpose. And um, we also need our pH equation as well. And our pH equation is minus log of H plus ions. So let's get started. Let's have a look at this question. So it says calculate the pH of the buffer solution formed when 0.1 moles per dm cubed of ethanoic acid is mixed with 0.15 moles per dm cubed of sodium methanoate, and we've been given a Ka value. Now, because we want to work out a pH, we need to use this equation here. But the problem is we don't have a concentration of H plus ions to be able to work out pH. So we have to use the Ka expression to actually work this out. So you can see we've got a H plus part that we need to work out. We've been given a Ka value. Um, we need to work out the A minus and the HA part uh, to, be able to enable us to work out the H plus and then put it into our pH expression. So we're going to start um, with um, the, the first step in this reaction. And the first thing we need to do is to work out the concentration of HA. Now, the concentration of HA um, is actually um, the concentration of our weak acid. And we have been given that as well. So you can see there's our concentration of our weak acid, which is ethanoic acid. So we can just say that that is... 0.1, and we assume that the concentration that the ethanoic acid doesn't dissociate much, so we can make that assumption there. The next thing is to work out the concentration of A minus, and in this case, the A minus part, which is this bit here, is actually our ethanoate ions. That is the ions that are formed when our salt dissociates. Now, we assume that our salt fully dissociates, so we can say that actually, whatever the concentration of this was, um, is actually the concentration of our ethanoate ions as well. Uh, and that's one of the assumptions that we make down here. So because of that assumption, we can say that the concentration of A minus um, is actually uh, 0.15 moles per dm cubed. And so that's our concentration of our ethanoate ions or our salt ions. Now, because we know these two parts, we can actually use our Ka expression. So Ka equals H plus concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA, which is our acid. And we can rearrange that to just get H plus on its own. So if we rearrange that, so that's H plus will equal, and we do Ka. 
uh, multiplied by the concentration of HA, divided by the concentration of A minus. And then if we use all of these um, numbers that we've got here and substitute them into there, we should be able to find out our concentration of H plus. So our concentration of H plus, so Ka is 1.74 times by 10 to the minus 5. Multiply that by the concentration of HA, which is 0.1. Put brackets around that. Divide that by our concentration of A minus, which is 0.15. And what we should get is we should get a value um, of our concentration of H plus to be 1.16 times by 10 to the minus 5. And that's obviously moles per decimeters cubed. So that is our concentration of H plus ions. Um, now we're on to the last bit, and the last bit is uh, calculating the pH, because now we know the concentration of H plus. So pH, as you can see over there, is the minus log of H plus. And in this case, H plus um, is 1.16. So 1.16 times by 10 to the minus 5. There you go. Uh, and then if you put that in a calculator, we should get a final pH value uh, of 4.94. So you can see that um, this buffer um, will uh, actually has an acidic pH because it's an acidic buffer, um, and this pH is 4.94. Now, this is just um, a very simple way of calculating the pH of buffer solutions. Um, there are more... Uh, calculations and some of them are a lot longer than this as well um, a little bit more extensive um, so for example you can make buffers by mixing an acid and a weak and a, uh, sorry an acid and a weak acid and a base together uh, and you can actually make a buffer solution that way as well um, but if you want to look at more calculations to do with buffer solutions and just check the playlist um, to do with acids bases and buffers uh, and you should find a few more on there but in terms of this that's all that's required and I hope it helps Bye.